was Supercar to London something you always wanted to do? And that was asked by Matthew, and his Twitter is 10 Rogers. Got lost two minutes away from where I live. <laughs> I've been living here for 24 years, and I'm lost. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back in the UK, and this is the first video that I've done on Supercars of London since I've come back from holiday in Portugal. I hope you enjoyed all the content that came out during the week on a day-by-day -day basis, and I can't believe that I ran out of one video. I obviously didn't count properly. Today, the idea is I'm gonna be answering questions from the hashtag ask Paul that I did on Twitter whilst I was out in Portugal. And I'm also gonna give you a catch up, a rundown of everything that is going to be happening going forward now on the Supercars of London YouTube channel because there's lots of cool stuff happening. Obviously, I'm gonna be starting the daily vlogs again, so I wanna let you guys in on the secrets behind what is gonna be going on in the daily vlogs. And hopefully we can get some questions answered as well. And as you can see, I haven't got my own set of wheels. I'm driving my girlfriend's baby blue Fiat 500. Question number one is from Ryan12121, Ryan Churchill, as you can see here. Interesting question. Of all the wraps you have had, which one has been the best quality and the easiest to live with? And I think I could probably mention every single wrap that I've had and name its pros and cr cons because obviously I had the liquid dip and I've had the vinyl wrap. So the first vinyl wrap that I had was the Iron Man, which I did Gumball 3000 on. Absolutely loved the color scheme on the Audi R8. Some people didn't, but I think that was one of my favorite wraps because it was the first one. It was the idea that I had when I bought the car that I wanted to do Iron Man. That was probably my favorite wrap. The baby blue, it was a bit more rushed. I love the color, as does everyone else as does my girlfriend for buying a baby blue Fiat 500. She had it before I had a baby blue R8. Um, but I think that the quality of the actual wrap was better on the Iron Man than it was on the baby blue, and that's because slightly different people wrapped it. Kit Customs still wrapped it as a company, but slightly different people wrapped the car. And then we move on to the liquid dip, which was by far the best finish I have ever had on a car. The liquid dip just covers all of the joins. You can't tell that it's not the actual color of the car, and people didn't understand that. When I showed it to them, I was like, no, this isn't a factory car. People actually thought that I spent 15 grand at the factory, painting my car in a satin grey. The problem was with satin is it's very, very difficult to live with because it's so difficult to clean, so difficult to keep clean. And when it's dirty, that's pretty much it. I didn't particularly enjoy cleaning that car. Question number two is quite a um, question that pops up quite a lot, but I thought I'd answer it in this Q&A. What are your top three favorite supercars by Jordan Yalsin? I hope that's how you pronounce it. The top three supercars. The Aventador SV is definitely up there. I love the styling. I love what Lamborghini have been able to do. The problem that Lamborghini had was when they bought the Aventador out, it was so popular among the tuning companies. Novitec did a kit, Capri, uh, DMC did a kit, um, Mansuri did a kit, Liberty Walk have done two kits. So every single tuner made a body kit for the Aventador because the Aventador was so popular, people wanted it to become unique. What Lamborghini faced as a challenge was how do they differentiate their SV, an Aventador with a slight body kit, from the aftermarket tuners? And I personally think Lamborghini have absolutely nailed it. The spoiler is a bit hit and miss, a bit love or hate. Um, I personally think it looks quite good with the rest of the car, but overall the Aventador SV is up there as one of my top three favorite supercars. Number two, it has to be a Zonda 760. I think that car is just utterly ridiculous. It is a race car for the road. It's so raw, and because it's made by Pagani, not your everyday Ferrari, Lamborghini, Audi, Porsche, whatever it is, um, then, yeah, I think the uh, 760, the 760 PW, I wonder whether that will ever exist. I personally think the Audi R8 V10 Plus, the brand new one, is probably number three on my top favorite supercars. First original R8, like mine, was an absolute masterpiece and it was a real game changer. I mean, I've had it for however long, 14, 15 years. Uh, <laughs> 14 or 15 years. 
Nate or T-I-I-S-O-T. And his question is, how many attempts did it take you to pass your theory and practical driving test, or did you pass them both first time? Passing your driving test is obviously a very, very important time of your life. You get that independence, and you also get to drive a car, which is an absolute dream. I think within two weeks, I passed my theory test. First time, I passed my theory test first time. I think I got like 46 in the actual test and 70 something in the, um, what's the reaction video? I don't know what it was called. I went, I tried to pass my driving test first time. That meant, it would have meant that I would have been uh, quicker than my brother and the quickest in the year. And I failed, I got one major because on the Vauxhall Corsa back in the day, you had to, I think it was either squeeze down or lift up the gear stick and shove it back across to go into reverse where first gear is. Not like this car, which is reverse to where six. Reverse and I reversed into the curb, which uh, was very embarrassing. But at the same time, I learnt my lesson. I came back and I passed second time. Was Supercars of London something you always wanted to do? And that was asked by Matthew and his Twitter is 10 Rogers. There we go, that's the question. As weird as it sounds, I fell, I stumbled across Supercars of London. Obviously, um, the story goes, I went, into, I went into central London with my dad to go to the GCSE art project that I had to do f during the summer and saw all of these cars and was like, I need to film these, I need to take pictures of them. It was always a weird hobby of mine. And I knew that it was weird because everyone was staring at me as I was running past after a car with my camera in my hand. It was always something that I wanted to do as a hobby. And I, and I had in my head, like, even up until maybe the last year of university when I was 21, 22, I didn't think that I would be doing this full time on a day to day basis, creating YouTube videos, daily vlogging, supercars, driving cars, all of that stuff, or even owning one. I always grew up knowing that I wanted to create my own business. I wanted to work for myself. So in that sense, that kind of ties in. Yes, I wanted to do supercars in London um, from a young age of filming cars, but at the same time, I always wanted to have my own business. So that probably answers the question and says, yes, it was something that I always wanted to do. What made you start Supercars of London and what keeps you motivated to keep the content coming? Now, this is a really important question for me to answer because, I mean, what's, what made me start Supercars of London? That's pretty simple as, as a fact of I loved cars. I loved going into central London and I love filming and photographing the cars. What keeps me motivated to keep the content coming? It's really down to you guys. I mean, the energy that I see on my YouTube channel, on my Twitter, Instagram, the amount of um, smiles that I'm able to produce off every video is like overwhelming for me. And knowing that my audience is growing and you guys just keep wanting more, keep wanting to see what I get up to, that's what keeps me mo motivated to create content. And I know that I'm not the best YouTuber out there. And I know that I'm not the best content creator in terms of editing, the quality. Um, but overall, I love cars, simple. I love um, sharing cars with, with, with all of you guys. And it's now turned into a Supercars of London community, which I just never really expected, but at the same time, I'm welcoming with open arms. <laughs> because I absolutely love doing what I'm doing. So the motivation comes from definitely you guys that watch me on a day-to-day -day basis, that love the daily vlogs, that keep commenting, telling me that you love the daily vlogs. That's what keeps me motivated, and that's what keeps me wanting to make better content, find better cars, drive better cars, and overall upgrade my camera equipment and, be and make the best possible videos ever. I didn't think it was this hot in England. I'm having a break. Here we go, next question. I've had a bit of a break and I'm keeping the window open. Nathan Ellis 2, would you rather be an F1 driver or a professional footballer? And this is a question that I think I can ask all of you guys because it's one of those dilemmas that we're never gonna be in, or I'm sure that there's actually gonna be some people that might be in this dilemma. And if, if you are, lucky you. <laughs> professional footballer, I think, um, is a good one, but a Formula One driver as well. The lifestyle of a Formula One driver, more specifically Lewis Hamilton. I think it would have to be a Formula One driver. 
We are now moving on to Flacco, Louis underscore O-E-R-E-Z. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Sorry, Louis. Um, but the question is, my question is, what is the real reason you want to sell the R8? It was a big part of your life. It was a huge part of my life. My first supercar, the amount of amazing memories that we've had um, in that car and on YouTube as well. It's been phenomenal. Absolutely um, unbelievable car. I'm just going to turn the car off because otherwise it will run out of battery and I have to push it home. Um, <laughs> sorry to sidetrack from the uh, question. Um, but the, re the main reason is that I was checking the um, Audi R8 UK market, the used car market and realized that I could probably sell my car based on the spec, mileage, and age for more than I actually paid for it. So it was a huge point in my time when I realized, do you know what, I actually wanna sell this car, this is the perfect time to get as much money out of the car as possible so that I can actually achieve my dream of owning a Lamborghini by 25. So that is the main reason why I was set, I'm selling my R8 right now, is the fact that I can get more money for the car now than I might be able to get in a year's time or six months ago. So it's given me the best opportunity to own a Lamborghini by 25. So yeah, as much as it is a big part of my life, it's time to move on. I'm gonna be putting the window up now as it is time to move off from my location. That is the end of the Q&A, but by no means the end of the video. Basically, I want to thank every single person that has subscribed to my YouTube channel, watched one of my videos, left a thumbs up, left a thumbs down, left a comment, whatever it is. I honestly can't thank you enough. It's just unbelievable how much support that I have on the Supercars London YouTube channel, and I want to show it, and I want to give it back to you guys. So I am seriously going to be sitting down, now that I'm back in uh, England, and finish my holiday I'm gonna be sitting down and working out ways in which I can get as many people out for rides in my car meetups whatever it is whether it's meet or greets let me know what you want tweet me Instagram comment box um, whatever you want whether you want me to greets whether you want me to do uh, drives around the UK we could do I don't know what it is but I want to do charity rides I want to basically give back to all of you guys that have supported me I want to bring you in on the supercars of London community and that's all gonna start changing from now um, I want to start doing merchandise supercars of London t-shirts supercars of London cap supercars of London mobile phone cases and there's gonna be some super cool competitions I it, I'm super excited basically and I've said super a lot but I am and it's what motivates me is giving back to you guys because you show so much love on my YouTube channel and the Q&A I think has gone well I hope you guys have enjoyed this video it feels like it's like hasn't got that much of a production behind it um, but at the moment on a Sunday it's the day after I got back from Portugal there's no car at my disposal I'm borrowing my girlfriend's car to do this video and I haven't got my Sony uh, vlogging camera which I will be getting very very soon the question that I answered earlier in the Q&A about selling my car at the right time fingers crossed it gets sold soon because that is what is going to make the, the transition between cars smooth it hasn't sold yet but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be sold this week who knows once that car is sold then I will know what I will be able to do for my second supercar fingers crossed guys fingers crossed it is going to be a Lamborghini next that's all I'm going to say but thank you for watching, um, and thank you so much for supporting. I know that I've said that a lot, but it truly means everything to me. Um, and hopefully we can have a lot of fun over the rest of the year, 2016, and moving forward so that we can get to 250,000 subscribers, half a million subscribers, a million subscribers, and keep building the Supercars of London community. But right now, that is the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this Q&A Sunday. Stay tuned for some insane videos coming to my channel, some daily vlogs that are all gonna be super cool quality once I get this camera. And bring it on guys, just bring it on. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already as why I do this junction now. And I will see you on Tuesday. You've just got nothing but the V10 or whatever engine you've got, no roof.